Have you been told to sleep on your back to prevent wrinkles on your face? In this video, I'll reveal why you may get even more wrinkles by sleeping on your back. I'll also show you what your best sleep position is and strategies for sleeping better starting tonight. Dermatologists have been telling women for years to stop sleeping on their sides or tummies to prevent sheet wrinkles on their face. And chiropractors are telling people to sleep on their back for healthier spinal alignment. There may be some truth to both suggestions, but I'm going to show you why in the long term you'll get more facial wrinkles by sleeping on your back. Even more, you'll be at risk of gaining weight, lowering your sleep quality, and even raising your stress hormones. The reason why will be very surprising. Join me in this video as I reveal your best sleep position to prevent not only facial wrinkles, but to wake up much more refreshed and have the energy to enjoy life again. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Park, ENT surgeon and sleep doctor, and author of the Amazon best-selling book, Sleep Interrupted. Here's something I saw about once a month while I was in practice. I remember one woman, Karen, who was in her 40s or 50s, who came to see me for frequent sinus infections about once a month for the last six months. She was given antibiotics every time with only temporary relief. After listening to her story and doing a thorough exam, I asked her what her current sleep position was. She tells me she sleeps on her back. Based on her exam, I don't believe her. Then I ask which position it was when she was in her 20s. Her stomach. When did she change? About 6 to 7 months ago. Why? Her dermatologist told her to avoid sleeping on her stomach. I had her go back to her normal sleep position and she called me back in 2 months to say that her sinus infections and headaches were gone and she had much more energy during the day. I tell this story to emphasize the important point that most people today not only prefer to sleep on their sides or stomachs, but in most cases, they have to sleep in these positions so they can sleep at all. If you look at old photos of people sleeping, they're typically sleeping on their backs with an air quote filled with Z's. In looking for an image for this video's YouTube thumbnail, I had a hard time finding any photos of men or women sleeping on their backs. I'm willing to guess that most of you watching this video prefer to sleep on your side or stomach, right? Please let me know what your favorite sleep position is in the comments below. So why the sudden shift in our preferred sleep positions? It has to do with your ability to breathe properly at night. It's related to your crooked teeth and all the dental work and the braces you needed as a child and may still need today. The problem is that modern humans' faces and jaws are shrinking. The smaller the jaws, the more crooked and crowded your teeth will be, and most importantly, the smaller your upper airway, especially at night. Take a look at some of the popular celebrities 50 to 80 years ago. Here's Clark Gable, and Greta Garbo, and more recently, Krista Revive and Madonna. Notice that they all had very wide jaws. Now take a look at the more modern, younger celebrities, such as Tyra Banks, Will Smith, Jessica Alba, and Johnny Depp. The older group of celebrities are more likely to be able to sleep on their backs, where the more recent ones can't. I'll go over why our faces are shrinking in a future video, but in brief, it's due to a combination of modern, soft Russian diets, more bottle feeding, and various other environmental factors. As our jaws get smaller, our chins are more recessed, and we have flatter cheekbones, more crooked teeth, and more triangular faces. This is also why it's a given that our wisdom teeth have to be taken out. That's because there isn't enough room for the teeth to erupt. It's been said that even about 100 years ago, most people didn't need their wisdom teeth taken out. Now, this may sound like only a cosmetic problem, but there are two important health issues that you have to know about. Our jaws make up the bony framework that holds muscles and skin on the outside and muscles and mucous membranes on the inside. And here's how all this connects to facial wrinkling. The larger and wider your facial bones, the more taut and stretched out your facial soft tissue will be, including your facial muscles and overlying skin. So as you age and your skin becomes laxer due to lack of collagen and other important factors, you'll see more facial wrinkles perpendicular to the direction of your facial muscles as they constrict. So the more poorly you eat, spend too much time out in the sun, smoke, or have too much stress, the more relaxed your skin will be and you will have more facial wrinkles. The other more important consequence of having smaller jaws is that on the inside, where your soft tissues get more crowded. It's like keeping the same amount of furniture in a room, but making the room 30 or 50% smaller. So the space around the furniture gets more narrow and harder to go around. Similarly, there's less space for the air to pass through to the lungs to bring in oxygen. So with more crowding inside your throat, the soft tissues bunch up with folds of tissue which cave in much easier with every breath in. 
The same problem happens inside your nose as well. Crowding of the jaws leads to a high arched palate and a deviated nasal septum. I debunked the most common myth about the nasal septum in another video, which I'll link to below. Now, the upper airway isn't just a hollow tube to pass air into the lungs. It's a complex pathway with many levels of narrowing and also has to accommodate speaking and swallowing. Evolutionary biologists have said that speech and language development made swallowing and breathing not work as well. This is why essentially only humans choke on food and we also have obstructive sleep apnea. The one exception is flat-faced dogs like human faces. I'll talk about these topics as well in other videos. It's not just narrowed anatomy and passageways that affect airflow, but many other factors, including the following. Number one, gravity. Because of the way the tongue muscles are positioned, it tends to fall back more when you're on your back, and not as bad if you're on your side or stomach. Number two, your sleep stage affects how relaxed your muscles are. In general, your tongue muscle is more relaxed when you're sleeping, but in REM sleep when you're dreaming, it's completely relaxed. So with each breath in caused by contraction of the diaphragm, there's negative pressure in the throat, especially behind the tongue. If your jaws are more narrow or more recessed, then the position of the tongue is further back, and at a certain point, the tongue may fall back completely, leading to a partial or complete apnea, where you stop breathing and then wake up. The third one are sex hormones, especially progesterone and to a lesser degree, estrogen in women. Progesterone is a strong respiratory stimulant. One of my most popular blog posts with almost 1,000 comments is about throat pain a few days before women's periods. This is from lower levels of progesterone just before menses and lower genoglossus tongue muscle activity. This would be another topic for an upcoming video as well. Number four is inflammation such as allergies, colds, and even acid reflux. This causes more swelling and narrowing of the airways. Now, there's a condition called positional sleep apnea where you don't have sleep apnea if you're off your back. And apnea is when you stop breathing completely for more than 10 seconds, and you have to have more than five of these every hour. It's called obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. There are some other criteria for determining sleep apnea diagnoses, but this is just a basic gist. It's estimated that about 50% of people with mild sleep apnea have positional sleep apnea, about 20% with moderate sleep apnea, and about 67% of people with severe sleep apnea have no sleep apnea if not on their back. This is why a lot of people just naturally like to sleep on their sides or stomach and never have to see a sleep doctor. However, if you ever get injured or undergo an operation and you're forced to sleep on your back, for many of you, you just won't sleep that way at all, tossing and turning all night long. The same thing will happen if you're told to sleep on your back to prevent facial wrinkles. I'm willing to bet that because your sleep quality goes down, every aspect of your health will go down as well. Over time, with increased stress hormones and lack of oxygen, your skin will begin to lose its elasticity with more swelling and color changes and just looking less healthy. One important concept about any type of stress, whether it's physiologic, like in apneas, physical, such as excessive exercise, or psychological, is that your body responds by ramping up the sympathetic or stress portion of your fight or flight response. So you end up shutting down your digestive system, your reproductive organs, higher levels of thinking in your brain, and your distant end organs. So there's going to be less blood flow to your hands, your feet, and your skin. The wrinkles that the dermatologist is talking about are not from facial muscle contractions, but superficial skin indentations from bed sheets or pillowcases. If you're otherwise healthy, these minor indentations will go away in a few minutes or hours, just like the other parts of the body. But if you don't sleep well, your face will age faster and become more wrinkly since you already have a small facial bony framework and your skin is not getting proper blood flow or nutrients. Now, I do agree with the chiropractors that sleeping on the back is the most ideal position for spinal alignment and comfort but not at the expense or cost of poor breathing and poor sleep. But what can you do if you like to sleep on your side but can't anymore due to back or neck pain, shoulder pain, or arm numbness? The following steps aren't perfect but can help you to sleep better on your back. Use a contour pillow or any pillow that bends your head back, which is called extension. The more you bend your head forward, the more narrow the space behind your tongue becomes. You can see here the size of the airway is narrowed with your head in a neutral position but opens up dramatically when you lift up and bend your head back just a few inches. These contour pillows do something similar. It's higher at your neck level and lower behind the back of your head, creating what's called extension, which opens up your airway. This is why these pillows are marketed for snoring and better sleep. In general, and especially when using this type of pillow, it's important to keep your mouth closed since opening your mouth does the same thing, which narrows your airway. 
So regardless of your sleep position, it's important to position your head properly and keep your mouth closed. I'll talk about strategies to keep your mouth closed and have better nasal breathing in a future video. Another way to sleep better on your back is to raise the top of your body. The simplest thing to do is to raise the top of your bed frame by 2-4 to four inches using books or blocks of wood under the feet of the bed at the top. This is a common suggestion for acid reflux, but this will also work to help you breathe better since they're both related. You can also use a wedge mattress and there are different options. The most expensive option is to buy an adjustable bed. What all these options do is by elevating the top of your body, you're lessening gravity's effect on your throat muscles, and there's less chance of acid reflux, which can aggravate more apneas. As I mentioned in previous videos, it's important to avoid eating within 3-4 to four hours of bedtime to minimize stomach acid when you go to sleep. One potential problem with these wedge mattresses is that you may slide down through the night and end up bending your head forward, which can narrow your airway. There's less chance of this happening with an adjustable bed. If you want to sleep on your side more comfortably, then there are several different options including various pillows or full body pillows. You can also find configurations that allow you to have less pressure on your arm and shoulder such as this Metcline mattress pillow which is an inclined wedge with a hole at the top where you place your arm through to lessen pain or numbness. You can find the link below. Lastly, this one's a bit far-fetched. One of my patients in the past told me he could only sleep on his tummy but was having neck problems since he had to turn his head to one side. I jokingly told him to try one of those massage tables with the headrest to place his face looking down. He took my advice literally and called back to say that he was sleeping much better. So what is the best sleep position in general, not only to prevent facial wrinkles, but for your overall state of health? Ultimately, it's whatever position you're most comfortable sleeping in. If you're not sure, experiment. Or think about how you normally slept when you were much younger. I made the point that most modern humans, due to our shrinking faces and airways, prefer to stay off our backs. But if you'd like to sleep on your back and function well during the day, then keep doing it. Personally, I prefer to sleep on my back, but I have to use a makeshift contour type pillow using an Asian husk filled pillow with a wooden downside to give it more support. I also use nasal dilator strips and tape my mouth closed to keep my mouth from opening. I tried sleeping on my side, but my arms became numb. Troubles start when you're normally a side or stomach sleeper and you suddenly start to sleep on your back due to an injury, an operation, or due to your dermatologist's advice. If this is the case, try to go back to your normally preferred sleep position. If not, experiment with some of the devices I mentioned in this video, for which the links are found below. If you found this video helpful, check out this video on the right where I debunk the most common myths about a deviated septum and the septoplasty operation. And on the left, you can finally discover the answer to why you keep getting up to urinate at 3 in the morning. See you in the next video.